Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeeta from Dental Patchala, where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And we are back with electrical pulp testing. So today's video, we are going to see when we pass current through a tooth and check whether the tooth is dead or alive. So without further delay, let's jump into it. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. That way you get a notification as soon as I release a video lecture talking about the electrical pulp testing. This is used to check the vitality of the pulp. This in which an electric current is passed and we check if the pulp is dead or alive, if the pulp is vital or non-vital. Vital means the pulp is live and non-vital means the pulp is dead. And this apparatus, this testing is also known as the vitalometer. Vitalometer because this is used to measure the vitality of the pulp. Now you must be wondering that this test is very important. So this must be a very good test. But no, you are wrong here. This is the least reliable test for pulp testing the vitality of testing because if we are passing electric current that means it is based on the fibers it is based on the sensory fibers which are present in the tail in the pulp but it doesn't tell about any vascular supply of the pulp and if we talk about the vitality it is majorly due to the vascular supply so this is not a reliable test this is not a good test this test doesn't tell us about the degree of pulpal degeneration about the degree of pathosis but it tells about whether the pulp is life or dead whether the pulp is vital or non-vital so this test tell us about whether the pulp is responsive or non-responsive or unresponsive and it tells about the necrosis when there is no response coming from this test that means the pulp has gone necrosis the pulp is dead but this test, the vascular supply is actually the real indicator for the true vitality. So this test is unreliable test or least reliable test. Now this, how do we do this test? First of all, there is a probe tip. Now there is an electronic probe tip which we attached to our apparatus and then this probe tip is touched on the surface of the tooth. But before that, a toothpaste or any conductive medium or electrolyte is placed and then the tip of the probe is placed onto the surface of the tooth. If we talk about which surface of the tooth for anterior teeth, we place on the incisal one third and for posterior teeth, we place on the middle one third. Now, we use these location because they are, they are high nerve uh, density and there are more A delta fibers that is why we use in anterior incisal region and in posterior we use in the middle one third region. Now once we have placed toothpaste or electrolyte on the surface of the tooth on the same area we place this electronic probe tip and then we slowly start increasing the current and then we record the reading when the patient complains of the mild pain or when the patient tells about a tingling sensation. So the patient is holded with a lip clip which is attached on the lip or uh, we can also place this lip clip directly in, into the mouth. And we have to place this lip clip in order to complete the circuit so that the current can flow easily. The patient is usually instructed or asked to place the hand on the metal handle. That is we ask the patient to hold on the lip clip so that the circuit is completed and to begin this test. Now we ask the patient to release the hand. So if releasing the hand is going to stop the current, release the hand when there is tingling sensation or when the patient feels pain to stop the test. So while removing the patient hand itself is going to stop the test, we should avoid touching this uh, tip with the electronic tip we should avoid it should not touch any metallic restoration so any metallic restoration should not be touched touched with the electronic tip and also with the patient who are hurt patient the patient who are having the cardiac pacemakers we should not do this test because there is an electric current which we are passing across the tooth and this electrical pulp testing is also not used for immature teeth 
for immature teeth in which the root has not developed properly in which the apex is immature because the nerve fibers or the odontoblast are yet to develop that is why it is not it will not give a true value to us that is why it is not used in immature teeth or this electrical pulp tester we uh, there are two varieties they are monopolar and there are bipolar and the most frequently which we use in our clinics are the monopolar type of pulp tester now this pulp testing it gives us different result in case if the patient is having a reversible pulpitis suppose if a patient is having reversible pulpitis that means the this reversible pulpitis the patient is going to be in the the pulp is going to be in the hyperemia so there will be inflammation in which there is increased blood supply so when there is increased blood supply in case of a reversible pulpitis there is a inflammation and due to this inflammation there is increased increased blood supply now the patient will respond to the less current because there is increased blood supply so once we start increasing the current the patient is going to respond to pain in the less current than the normal and for irreversible pulpitis the pulp there is a pulpal necrosis in partial pulp or in the whole of the pulp so they it requires more current because the half of the pulp or most of the pulp is or half of the pulp necrotic pulp full the whole of the pulp will be dead in the necrosis pulp so irreversible pulpitis is when the most of the pulp is dead so we need more current to produce the pain with the electrical pulp testing so the in case of irreversible pulpitis it requires more current to induce the pain or to induce any response and if we talk about pulpal necrosis then it requires more current than the irreversible pulpitis and in case if there is an pulp polyp or we can say the chronic hyperplastic pulpitis so in case of a pulp polyp uh, in case of a pulp polyp there is less nerve supply as compared to the normal so it means it also requires more current to induce the pain so electrical pulp testing actually is not a reliable test because it depends on the nerve supply while the true vitality test should be depend on the vascular supply or the blood supply so this is not a reliable test and for necrosis it will not respond to current at all in case if a pulp is having a necrosis that means if a person is already dead no matter how much our current you pass through that person he is not going to feel anything so the same way no matter if the pulp is necrosis no matter how much current you are going to pass the pulp is not going to respond at all so we have two kinds of false result or the uh, fake result that is our false positive or the false negative false positive means see uh, the people get students get confused in this it is very easy false positive means the electrical pulp testing is giving a positive result if electrical pulp testing is giving a positive result that means the, the tooth is vital but in reality if a tooth is giving a false positive result that means tooth is the electrical pulp testing is telling us that the tooth is vital but on the other hand actually the tooth is dead so it is giving a false positive so false positive result is when the tooth is necrosed but it is still responding to the test and it is still responding to the ept when the tooth is dead already but still it is giving pain to the electrical pulp testing if we talk about false negative so negative means the electrical pulp testing is telling that the tooth is non vital but on the other hand in reality the tooth is vital the tooth is life so if we are giving the electrical pulp testing that means the result is not giving the so electrical pulp testing ept it is showing negative or it is showing that the pulp is non vital it is showing that the pulp is dead but while on the other hand uh, the pulp is alive and the pulp is uh, vital so it is a false negative wherein a vital pulp is a vital but it is not responding to the stimulus it is not responding to the electrical pulp testing so talking about one by one the false positive false positive is wherein the tooth is necrosed see the result is coming positive so the tooth is necrosed but still it is responding to the result still it is giving a positive result so it means false positive because the tooth is giving a positive result 
but this is not correct so that means it is telling the vital pulp but on the other hand in reality the tooth is dead so when it happens when we accidentally touch the gingiva or it can be stimulated from any adjacent tooth if the electrical pulp testic the probe electronic probe tip is touching any tooth which is actually vital and it is telling us the result from the tooth in which the electrical pulp testing or the probe tip, uh, probe tip is touching so accidentally if we touch any vital tissues and if we pass accidentally current from any of the vital tissues that means it will give us false positive result in reality the tooth is dead but it is touching any other vital organ structure any other vital structure so it is giving pain to the patient it is also giving the false negative positive result when the tooth is not isolated and dried when while doing the electrical pulp testing first the very first thing we do is we uh, dry the tooth we isolate the tooth and then we place the electrolyte or we paste the toothpaste which is our conducing movement conducive medium at the tip of the probe so the our electronic probe tip we place toothpaste on the tooth surface where we are going to place the tip the first thing we do is we isolate or dry the tooth if we are not isolated or dry the tooth that means it will give us false positive result in case the pulp is necrotic now the necrotic pulp are of two types one is the dry and one is the liquefaction liquefaction one is the moist and most of the time while the pulp is necrosed but still there is some vascular supply which is present in the necrosed pulp so this is the moist or liquefactive necrotic pulp it sometimes give us the positive uh, the false positive result and also in case of a multi rooted tooth in any of the tooth is vital but rest of the tooth for example if first molar we talk about and if in the upper first molar maxillary first molar if two roots are necrosed but one root is still vital so then it will give us false positive result but because this the the root which is still vital is going to give us the result it is going to give us the positive response so coming to the false negative false negative is when the pulp is vital but the pulp is giving us the negative response the pulp is telling the electrical pulp testing is telling us that the pulp is non vital the pulp is dead but on the other hand in reality the result is the tooth is vital tooth so if in a vital tooth wherein the it it is not responding to the electrical pulp testing so it happens when there is a recent history of trauma which is very important in case of a recent history of trauma it give us the false negative result while on the other hand the pulp is really vital but if immediately we do the electric pulp testing it tells us that the tooth is dead but it it is not so we don't do uh, frequently or immediately after trauma we don't do the electrical pulp testing and also if a patient had any pain killers if the patient was in pain and before coming to the dental clinic the patient had any pain killer or any analgesic so we should ask in the case history before doing the pulp testing that if the patient had any analgesics or any pain killer so if the patient have taken any pain killer sedative or analgesic it is not going to tell the tooth is not going to tell it's painful so it is going to give us the false negative result also when the patient uh, of the threshold to the pain is high then also it doesn't give us the uh, result then also it gives us the false negative or in case where the root is not formed properly in case of a newly erupted teeth wherein the apex is still immature now we all know that after the crown has completely erupted in the tooth it takes 2 to 3 years for the permanent tooth to complete the root formation so after the tooth has erupted into the uh, oral cavity we should not do at least for 2 to 3 years the electrical pulp testing so that after the root formation is completed then and only then we should do the electrical pulp testing otherwise it will give us the false negative result because the root has not formed completely and the pulp has not formed completely now since the pulp has not formed completely the nerve fiber and the odontoblast are yet to develop and if not use the conducive medium which is our toothpaste or any electrolyte and if the batteries are dead or that also gives us the false negative result or in case of a secondary dentine form which is our calcification in case of calcification is there 
that also give us false negative result because the current is not going to flow properly and the tooth is still vital but it the but because of the calcified mass which is present in the pulp a chamber in the pulp horns then it gives us the false negative result and also if there is any saliva present on the tooth surface so this is about electrical pulp testing this is not a reliable method this is the even least reliable method and the most reliable method for pulp testing if we talk about is the cold test not even the heat test the cold test so this electrical pulp testing is not a reliable because it depends on the nerve supply while the true vitality of the pulp is based on the blood supply so this is the least reliable test we can do so this is about electrical pulp testing and if you feel that i have made it easier for you then go ahead and hit the comment box and the like button because this help me to help you with your career with your exam and help me with your knowledge while you stay at home with your family stay safe